Hi, my name is Taylor Mae Jones, and I am a second year student in the MSAT programs, that's Masters of Science of Athletic Training. And today I'm gonna to do a little bit of an activity with you guys, and I have my handy dandy assistant right here, and I will let her introduce herself. Hi, my name is Sherry Pinkstaff. I'm an associate professor at the University of North Florida in the Department of Physical Therapy. Today we're gonna to do an activity with you guys that we are hoping that you will participate in and we're gonna do something called splinting. And that is something that athletic trainers utilize on the field, on the court, um, even at home. And so that's why I kinda of want you guys to learn how to do it because you might never know when you might need it. So what is splinting? Splinting is when you have to immobilize something on the body, um, usually a fracture. So let's say I have a fractured arm, this example that we're gonna to use today, and I need to immobilize that because when someone's being transported or they try to go to the hospital after they've been hurt, that moving really causes pain. So we're really, we want to uh, reduce that pain by immobilizing that uh, fracture site. So um, that's one of the reasons why we splint. And one of the big key components of when you're splinting is if you have a fractured you know, um, ulnar and radius, which is the two bones that you have here, uh, if you fracture that, you really want to immobilize the joint below and above where you fractured. So if, like I said, if, we're, if we've broken our arm, we want to immobilize the wrist and the elbow. Um, and then the other big key component that you want to check for is cap refill, which is, um, stands for capillary refill. So you want to make sure that they have blood flow before you put on the splint and after, because if you don't, if you have blood flow before and then you don't have it after, then that means that your splint is either too tight and it's cutting off blood circulation, which is not good. And that's not what we want because we're not making a tourniquet here. We're just immobilizing. And so um, I'll have you guys pause and go try to find something that you want to utilize um, for splinting and it can be a spoon what you want is something that's really hard don't use a spoon because i've already used that be really creative um, i've seen people use t-shirts uh, magazines anything that you can find um, that will hold something on someone's body part you can utilize someone else your parents your brother your sister um, or you can splint your own your own leg or anything like that. So um, what you want is something that's hard that will keep it stable. And then you want something to wrap around it, like I said, like a t-shirt or tape or anything that you might have, an ace wrap, you might have one of those if you're playing high school sports and you've hurt yourself before. Um, and so I'm gonna real quick show you how to splint and then you guys can pause and go find yourself whatever you might need. So um, I would, of course, first check cap refill, which um, you'll squeeze, and then the finger should go white, and then when you come back, it should instantly go back red within two seconds. If it doesn't go back red within two seconds, then that means that you've cut off blood supply or blood supply has diminished. Um, and so I would check it. She has cap refill. And then another way you can also do it is just check her radial pulse, which is on the thumb side of the hand. And you'll check and find a pulse and say, okay, she's got a pulse, she's all good. And then I would have her, I like to use, um, I, this is a pot holder. You can use anything. You can use a rolled up t-shirt or anything like that if you're splinting the hand. But then I would have them hold that and that kind of just makes it a little bit more comfortable when you're splinting. And this way. And then this way, you will just go around. Like I said, you can utilize anything you want, but you want it to be stable, but not too tight. Like I said, we don't want to cut off circulation. So I'm just kind of using a little wrap. And it doesn't have to be pretty, right? It's a, tra a trauma injury. We just want it to be stable. And then we can use tape. If you have some type of tape that you would like to use, you can use that. And this isn't the prettiest splint, but it's something that will make them a little bit more comfortable. And if we're doing the arm, usually we'll put them in a sling. I'm sure that most everyone has seen a sling. If not, you can Google it real quick and you can find a picture of it. Um, if you go into the athletic training program, I'm sure that you will see enough slings that you won't ever want to sling, see another sling ever again. 
So this is just one of the many things that athletic trainers learn to do when it comes to trauma. And there's so many other things, not just in trauma, but also injury prevention and wellness. Um, and we have uh, health administration and all these other little things that are domains that we go through. And so this is just a little tidbit about athletic training.